Yes, well, here we are at the uh, Nine Dragons, and the boys have just arrived. They're uh, shaking hands with Bob Sowers of the President Hotel, and um, uh, Bob has just issued them to their place. Um, we're explaining how the microphones work, and my goodness, the, uh, the boys themselves are having a field day. I'm standing just behind them. Those um, haircuts are really marvelous. A late beetle here. Select. Shut up. John. Paul McCartney. George Harrison. That was John Lennon laughing. And now it's a ring of star who's suspended. How do you? How do you? Thank you, Jimmy. Well, Jay. Yes, and Jimmy too is sporting a beetle cut also. Followed by. Talking interviews and writing interviews for about 20 minutes. Talking, yes. Which will be followed by radio. Right, what? Uh, we will be obliged if the photographers. I wasn't told. I would be obliged if the photographers, <laughs> after the first 15 minutes, would move away so that the people with the notebooks come forward. Thank Don't you very much. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Oh, very good. Correct. Right, we'll have to send good natured jostling by the. Uh, by the boys themselves. The, uh, let me describe the scene here to you. Uh, we're standing just behind the, um, the four Beatles themselves. Um, Jimmy Nickel, the new Beatle, is on the right, and he looks exactly the same. As for the rest of them, well, uh, they look just like the pictures. Uh, very, uh, very good looking boys. And uh, boys are obviously having a very good time and reveling in it as, they, um, as they're sitting here facing a battery of um, news cameras. I should tell you, I've been at press conferences for almost every uh, <laughs> every um, celebrity and uh, movie star, recording star here in Hong Kong. I've never seen a crowd such as this. And now they're uh, they're making up a little group to uh, make a better picture. They're all getting together, and they're uh, absolutely blinded here by uh, popping flash bulbs. Absolutely blinded by them, and the big arc lights coming on for a television show. They're all in a very tight little group here, looking very, uh, <laughs> very much as if they're enjoying themselves, and uh, the photographers are having an absolute field day. I've never quite seen anything like it. They're popping away, shouting, asking for new poses, and the four boys are with their heads in a sort of diamond shape. John Lennon is on the left, on the top, Paul McCartney, and on the right, Jimmy McNichol. And uh, the fourth Beatle is sitting down at the table, with the four of them grouped very tightly around them. Are they both uh, considering they've flown all the way out from uh, from London, considering I'll say, says uh, John Lennon there, all the way out from London, looking very fresh and not tired a bit. Um, and also looking as if they still get a great kick out of this sort of um, um, adoration, I think is the best way to describe it. Well, the, um, the manager of the president promised me a little earlier that it was going to be a well-ordered press conference, and so far it is. Nick Kendall. I'd like to mention that uh, Jimmy Nickel, who's just joined the group, is uh, working very well on that beetle haircut. He's almost up to the other beetles, as a matter of fact. If you notice that, uh, it's uh, not quite to the eyebrows, but uh, it's coming along great, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's all over the... Um, yeah, it's about the same length at the back. It's enough to give the sergeant major of the, um, the guards division a heart attack, I should imagine. What do you think of all this, Patricia? Well, I think it's quite extraordinary, because uh, they, they remind me of medieval actors walk straight out of a Henry the uh, Shakespearean play, you know, rather crude sort of soldiers. And uh, it's so odd to hear these very rough voices coming out of these long haircuts. <laughs> yes, well, it is indeed, and uh, I think uh, Pat is taking a very uh, mature view of the whole proceedings, as indeed she was at the airport. Certainly we've never seen a crowd at the airport quite the size as that crowd that uh, got out there to greet them uh, today. And uh, now on come the arc lights, the big clear lights, as the uh, movie cameras begin to whirl, and we're standing facing them, just behind the Beatles themselves, and um, almost blinded by it all. I suppose the lads themselves are, um, are quite used to this sort of thing. And um, certainly photographers are having a field day. I'd like to ask John Lennon if he likes the Beatles himself. <laughs> Imagine he uh, hears his records quite often. I don't think I should ask him now, though, because uh, the time has been allocated to the photographers, and they must be at least six or seven deep. Oh, a movie star or something has arrived. I think it's the Thai movie stars have arrived here, and uh, this has brought the Beatles to their feet. Yes, it is. They've been here for a fashion show at the hotel. They're being introduced by Frankie Blaine, and uh, the Beatles there are even uh, combing their hair, I think, because of this. <laughs> combing our hair. That's a lie. He's lying to you, listeners. 
Correct. That was the voice of John Lennon. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't think there's any suspicion of hair combing going on amongst these boys uh, at the moment. Two uh, beautiful young ladies just arrived, beautiful uh, Thai film stars, according to Nick, who knows most of the beautiful girls around town, have been introduced and are now in the place of honor in front of the, um, in front of the Beatles themselves. Now they're causing quite a stir. Nick Kendall's getting his face in there. It's come to think of it, I've never seen a face of a movie star at a press conference without seeing Nick Kendall's face in there somewhere. They're all together, and the Beatles are making a great fuss of these guys. Really enjoy all the noises from the, um, the photographers, the press photographers themselves. They're shouting, "Kiss her, kiss her!" But uh, nobody's uh, nobody's accepted the invitation, and even uh, this beautiful Thai girl has um, has got herself uh, excited about the um, the proceedings here. A firm word from Paul McCartney there, telling the lads to behave themselves. They're all grinning and laughing, and. Uh, having a marvelous time of it. Little conversation going on there. What's happening, Nick? Well, I was just remarking on what the boys are wearing here. Paul McCartney's got a rather uh, Madras-looking sort of jacket, and uh, John is wearing a dark blue blazer, I think, and he's, uh, he's got a checked shirt. Uh, Jimmy Nickel is uh, wearing a dark jacket, a light blue tie. George Harrison has got a light gray jacket on with a black uh, velvet collar, I believe. And uh, I just noticed how long their hair is. You notice that it covers their ears? They probably can't hear themselves when they sing. Uh, strangest thing there. A little man popped up from the middle of the crowd, marched forward uh, in between the uh, uh, John Lennon and Paul, uh, forced himself between them, put his arms around the two of them, and all the cameras fired off. So that's the shot of a lifeline for somebody, particularly if he himself um, is a Beatle fan. And... Um, <laughs> I think just about everyone here is a Beatle fan in Hong Kong. If they're not, then they're missing a lot of fun because they certainly look like a very nice crowd of boys. I know those two of the boys are taking the opportunity to light up a cigarette. Uh, George Harrison and uh, Jimmy Nichol have uh, lit up a cigarette. Now they're sitting down, the two Thai movie stars directly in the middle and uh, Beatles on both sides here. John Lennon and Paul McCartney on one side and uh, Jimmy Nichol and George Harrison on the other side. And now we're going to have a young lady who is going to be introduced to the Beatles. I believe uh, her name is Lydia Sung. Uh, yes, Lydia, what are you going to do with that? Well, I'm going to ask them to autograph it for me. Oh, Lydia uh, has got a large picture of the Beatles around a fountain or in a garden, and uh, she's going to go forward and ask them to... Um uh, to autograph another it. girl here too. I think her name is Carol Baxter. She's going to be introduced to the Beatles because she won a contest. I like the Beatles because and she is uh, around somewhere too, and the Beatles will be meeting her, and it'll be a thrill of a lifetime for her because I understand that she'll be having her picture taken with the Beatles that she liked so much and could put in words so eloquently. Yes, uh, I wonder what's happened to that little girl. She was well to the front a few moments ago, Nick. She was. Uh, she didn't get stampeded in a rush, did she? The wouldn't be surprised to see anyone trampled underfoot for this sort of thing. Um, but anyway, it was Lydia Sung who just came forward for her autograph picture. Ow! Sorry. That was a chair. <laughs> it's just landed on my foot. I understand uh, that. Uh, and um, Carol while, Baxter uh, is not here. She got so excited or, or ill or something that she, she's gone. <laughs> they took her away or something. She got overcome with excitement, I guess. Oh, what a great pity. Well, if she's anything like um, as excited as all those kids at the, uh, at the airport were, uh, about 2,000 of them crowding out there on the apron of the airport trying to get at them. Uh, then she's a very excited girl indeed. Well, more pictures. We've uh, promised, or at least the President Hotel, Bob Sars, has promised that the photographers could have 15 minutes of their time here to fire pictures. And a notable feature of all press conferences in Hong Kong, of course, is that the press can't get a chance to ask questions because the uh, photographers sort of... Um, uh, hug the proceedings. Yes, I just got a word of confirmation from <laughs> uh, John Lennon. John Lennon, the writer, by the way. John, whose book uh, you probably heard on Radio Hong Kong, uh, being reviewed on Radio Hong Kong in his own right, which is selling like hot cakes, but nothing, li nothing like the records, I understand. Our books don't sell like records, as long as they don't eat the book. Right. Well, uh, there must have been... <laughs> I hope that um, they haven't been eating the records either. That was John, whose, um, whose book... You will hear dramatized in the special Beatles program being broadcast this evening at 10 past 9 by Radio Hong Kong. Now, I hope that in just a moment or two, when the uh, press photographers get through, we're going to have the opportunity of uh, asking a few questions with the rest of the press. Uh, so far, everything quite orderly, but of course, the usual um, confusion when there's a press of people, such as there is 
at this moment. Two more minutes for pictures will probably be enough, and then if all the photographers will go back about 12 feet to allow the writers in, that would be most helpful. Correct. Correct. Right. Um, getting allowed here, here. That's Mr. Taylor, the manager on the road with them, who has asked that question, which we somehow Ready? think will not be responded to. Photographers in Hong Kong tend not to back off, despite how many rolls of film they've taken. What do you say, Nick? Well, it's going to be interesting to find out what the reaction is when the two minutes are up here. I don't know how they're going to get them back if they decide they don't want to uh, be moved and, and, and hold their ground, which is what they might do. But then again, there was sort of an agreement made with the others that this would be the procedure, and if they don't, we'll probably boo them away, won't we? That's, uh, I believe, one of the, one of the Beatles is traveling with his wife, isn't he? Uh, one of the Beatles is married, John Lennon, but I'm not sure if his wife uh, is traveling with him. They don't want to go. I don't think so. An interesting note I'd like to mention here, that a real aspect of show business was very vividly and dramatically shown to me at Kai Tak. When everybody was screaming for the Beatles, I noticed a group of six musicians. They looked like musicians, and I said to myself, this is probably the group known as Sounds Incorporated, and nobody spoke to them, nobody asked them for an autograph because they're not the stars. So it just goes to show you that it's not all fame and fortune. There are people that are still struggling to reach and attain stardom and you get completely ignored like, like I mentioned, the sound, Sounds Incorporated group. Six very, very charming fellows. Well, I must take my hat off to uh, Frankie Blaine there. It's the first time I've ever seen it happen at, uh, at a press conference. But Frank Blaine, I should tell you, is about six foot ten tall and about the same width across the shoulders. And uh, he has managed something I've never seen at a press conference in Hong Kong before. He's managed to get the photographers out of it so that the press people can have a word. What do you think of that, Pat? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I was being pestered by a little chap who wants me to, uh, to use me as a collector of autographs. I was very impressed. I think because their cameras are so hot they couldn't hold them anymore and they just walked to the back to cool off a bit. The astonishing thing is that uh, photographers seem to take about a uh, full roll of 36 films, those shooting in 35 mil. And, uh, and, um, uh, and yet, uh, quite often, uh, none of these pictures appear in the paper. I'm sure that won't happen today. Today is B Day, Beetle Day, and the Beatles are here to answer questions by the press. It's the most exciting experience. Correct. 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 <laughs> Which is the uh, Beatles password, I think. Every time a question is asked, there's unanimous agreement with a shout of uh, correct. Only Pereira can ask a question, I think. Who said we were? You said. You did. We I remember, said. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> this one. Oh. What? What's that, George? What's your he answer? Said, you I said in the pay. I said in the pay. pay. How come you've got all that money? <laughs> <laughs> Interpretation know. there. We're very <laughs> we, we, uh, we don't profess to be good musicians, but whatever it is, it sells. And, you know, we don't know yeah. why. It doesn't, that would be, that would be put wrong, I thought, whatever it is. John picked the name, Beatles. Why did you pick the name Beatles, John? That's my fault. <laughs> hello, hello? It's not on. Bob, your mic's up. Bob, your mic's up. Bob, Bob. Bob. I right, a bit of microphone trouble here. Just a um, name, just a name. Just a name by any other. Just a name by any other Rose. Uh, Pardon? John Lennon because speaking. Well, why does anybody pick any name? You know, it's because the one they like best. <coughs> well, it was a good name at the time. Good, good. Well, you want to yeah, see us at night? I say, I say. Crawly, crawly. You see, it's a pun. Jolly good. Pun. Pun. <laughs> Go on then, go on. Marvelous, beautiful, beautiful. Very good, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Testing the mic, course I'm. It's off. Hello. Ah. Yeah. So testing it now, right? Ante testing. 
Yes, very, very marvelous. I love it. Uh, John, could I ask you a question? Um, <laughs> He's in the army. <laughs> That's right. He's in the army. When, uh, with all this traveling about, how do you get time to rehearse? Pardon? How do you get time to rehearse? <laughs> we don't. You don't rehearse? Uh, we do, but we rehearse with Jimmy, because he's new. Ah, You can see Aww. him again later, Oh, he's terrible. Look, uh, one of the reports made here was that you'd chosen Hong Kong yourselves. You've been offered several places, and um, that you yourselves had chosen Hong Kong. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, why was that? Because we wanted to see it. Any, uh, any reports from other show business personalities coming back? All of them. All but like we've it. Heard, we've heard a lot about it anyway. You they know. all like it. Since we were kids. What sort of uh, what sort of journey did you have on the way out? Oh, like very like bad. Well, it, it wasn't a bad journey. It was just uh, so long, you know. Could we please have questions coming from the front of the house and I not thought, individual interviews from yeah. the back? I thought that was out. I thought that was out. I'd like to ask the people, if they'll answer one question, I understand some money that's coming to them soon for one of their performances or a recording is going to endow a scholarship to send a little put it into the Gordon Is this true? Yeah, it? it's oh. the money made from the premiere of our <laughs> film in Liverpool. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the film, all the money that they make goes to a charity. Uh, why did you choose particularly Gordonstoun as a school for someone to go there from Liverpool? <laughs> because it's a good art school. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. What? What? Also, it's on the way down south. Of what you say? <laughs> you get right off the bus. Of what did we? <laughs> we don't know. It was picked for us, actually. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't pick the charity. We just sort of appear and they make the money and give it to whoever they feel like. I think. Is this the first charity? Uh, no. No. What was the first one you ever? Did? I don't know. I know. Ken Dodd in my goal. Ken Dodd in McGo. You don't know. With Ken Dodd. Comedian. McGull. Teeth. I've heard of him. That's right. Teeth. He's very good. Are you going to, whilst you're here, take a look at some of the poverty that exists in Hong Kong? No, if we can help it. He <laughs> 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 got it? Yeah. All right. Yes, there's a lot. Well, we don't have time anyway. We'd probably be stuck in the hotel. We're going to the good bits, you know. Well, I have to get there. Terrible capitalists. Yeah. May I ask you what your parents think of all this? Um, what do you think of Marcus? What do they do? Uh, I don't know, you know. Good publicity, aren't they? <laughs> there is something to write about. Are you interested in going to China? Pardon, where are we? <laughs> we're not far off, actually, are we? I thought we were there. Actually. I thought, isn't this China? Isn't though? this it? <laughs> What's he saying? I could have sworn. No? I think you got on the wrong plane, haven't you? Uh, John, yes? Eddie Mannering here, Commercial Radio. Hello, Eddie. Hi. Why did you choose to come to Hong Kong before Manila and Japan? Well, nobody asked me to go to Manila and Japan, did they ask you? Yeah. Where's Manila? <laughs> <laughs> well, I it's don't know. I'd like to know where they are. It's just well, it's just as popular as Hong Kong. It's just, is it? <laughs> it's just hanging off the bottom. Oh, that one. We're not very good at You've been doing things. any shopping while you're in Hong Kong? Yes. yes. You're looking yes. for anything special? No. But well, we have some somebody said, asking questions. Somebody, yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody said you can get Oh! oh, oh very good. Yeah. Uh, what uh, Hong Kong is like Well, when you've got to go, you've got to go. And you might as well you might as well go with Louis Armstrong as anyone else, might you? He's a good lad. <laughs> it's actually it's called Hello, Hello Dolly. Dolly. Well, Hello, Dolly. <laughs> it does, you know. You didn't buy it. To the fellow that wrote it. We make a lot of money, you know. No, no uh, don't we don't want to sing you. Hi, Duffy. <laughs> yes. No, we don't record it. No, it's jazz. <laughs> yes. Uh, how would you judge your reception at the Kai Tak Airport? Uh, the reception you received when visiting other countries? It's been great. <laughs> a good it was, comparison. Yeah, it was very good. It, very good. it was just like. No, it was about the same as we've had recently at other airports. 
George, they tell me that you arrived in London the other day and only two people turned up. Some of you arrived in two Three. 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 <laughs> Three. <I'm sorry. laughs> five. 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 Well, I took the Daily Express five. and, you know, you can't believe them. What happened? Oh, they know. were all round Ringo's bed. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never leave it. It's true. Oh, dear. Any questions? <laughs> Thing. Look at them, all screaming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, the, it's the same feeling as footballers must get when they come out onto a football field. It's a marvellous feeling inside, you know, and it's the same every time. Ask Jimmy because it's new. It's, it's a great feeling. <laughs> no, it, actually, you get irritated when the screams go down a bit. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> I don't think they'd ban us, but it might be funny with a tax, I've heard. Well, we don't vote, so we don't mind. We, we don't vote anyway, so... Why don't you vote? We don't want to. That's fine. Right. Have you elected girls at Hong Kong? Well, I don't know. Well, uh, from what we've seen, they're great. Everywhere you go, there's some good and some bad, aren't there? <laughs> I'm with you. Correct. 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 Gentlemen, uh, Stan Rich, American Broadcasting Company. Hey, Stan. I'm a little bit out of my league, so I've got to turn you over to my 12 year old son here. He's got a couple of questions. Oh, excuse us, we're doing a radio show. Are you joking? <laughs> no, we just. Uh, anybody does ours, anybody who happens to have scissors. Right? Correct. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Sorry? Uh, Derek? Twist. No. No, we didn't. Didn't know that. We didn't know all of the twist. Adam Beetle know it got. <laughs> Yes? No, it is. It's just a rumor. Oh, do you get your hair cut? Um, <laughs> oh, it just depends. Uh, no, I was still saying it, Usually it? about once every blue moon. <laughs> John, could you tell us something about the book that you've written? It's selling well. <laughs> uh, what made you write it, you know? What is it about? It's about nothing, really. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd just do it for a hobby, you know. I've done it for many years. Have you any idea how many copies you've sold already? No, because I changed my phone number and the fella can't get in touch with me to tell me. <laughs> John, somebody suggested that. Uh, I've read some of it. Uh, it looked as though Lewis Carroll sort of had something to do with it. Did you ever read Lewis Carroll when you were young? Yes, uh, Alice in Wonderland, that's all, and The Looking Glass. And Lewis Armstrong. Oh, he was Better another one, yeah. Years. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, of course, I had to. The state made me. Until <laughs> <laughs> I was about 18, 19, I've forgotten. What? Well, that's oh, school, isn't it? That's school, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, John. All right, correct. <laughs> uh, you're taking your mothers to Australia, is this right? Well, Paul that's and I aren't. Incorrect. No, um, John's it's a little just bit mixed my auntie's up. Just his auntie. Australia, that's all. We haven't got... She's resting. Uh -huh. But we hear reports that uh, some of you are bringing your mothers. Uh, yeah, oh, well, we you see, you're too. on the wrong agency. <laughs> <laughs> that was the no. Daily Mail. Are you all sworn brothers at Blackburn? No, we never swear. <laughs> We're just good friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, excuse me, they were telling Pardon? Thank you. Mary Cotton's oh. Commercial Radio. Uh, you're going to Australia, and I heard you're learning some Chinese words. Do you want to listen on some Australian uh, greetings? Yes, please. How are you, mate? How are you, mate? Got that English, yes. And are you going to Bondi Beach? Third Dinkum. I've heard that one. Third Dinkum, yeah. And how many that you before I finish off? Nobody, you know, it's just a, it was just a hairdo that we, we'd seen someone with and we liked it. 
and it developed, you know, we used the word developed. longer anyway. Mm -hmm. Can you step the line now? A lot yeah. of people say you're wearing your own beetle wigs. Is it real? Well, do you want to pull it? Yeah, may I? Yeah. <laughs> Every press conference. I've got little beetles here. Yeah. There it's you go. Real. It's real. Okay. Ah, thank you for the wig maker. It's another one. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled another one. Yeah. Never Hello? Know. Uh, what is it? Oh. <laughs> what, what's the SPCA, please? <laughs> ah, the, the RMS. No, well, that's, the that's, that's royal ones. Oh, well, I like the royal ones. Like Cruelty to Beatles. Uh, what is it? Not buying the records, maybe? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Very cool. Three or four more minutes for questions, You're always please. Questions. Yeah. 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 That looks fun. <laughs> Look at this one. Leave it to your dad. <laughs> 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 like Sorry, Mike, Could you tell us, John, please, out of all the records that you've made, which one you were most satisfied with? Well, I always like, and I think the others do, the one we've just made, you know, because you get a bit tired of the others. So whenever we make a new one, we like that best. Which one, which one is your latest? Well, at the moment, it's Long Tall Sally, although we've been singing it for eight years. And the one from the film. All right, all right, we'll get a plug in. Cool. And there's a couple in the film. <laughs> Honoured, flattered, yeah. flattened. Eddie Manning, Commercial Radio. What do you oh, think of the causes? Goodness. That's right, we're all here. What are the causes of these cults, mods and rockers? Uh, it's something to do. Yeah. It's just that people you know, like new fashions anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you always get some people who don't, but it's just happens who have developed into a cult. The ones who do like the new fashions have gone mad about it. I don't you think they're going, the mods especially going a bit too far when they wear pink shirts and high heels shirts? Well, well what's right? We've got to get away from the in-betweens, haven't we? What else can they do? Yeah, no, but I mean, I'll tell you, you, that's nothing. Pink shirts. That's nothing. Yeah, they wear handbags. And handbags and eye makeup, that's a bit far. Yeah, well, we only just heard about it. Great news. Well, well, I think it's a bit Well, well that's a bit, handbags. you know, I would. Can you tell us something about your act while you're in Hong Kong? Are you going to do anything special? No, no. just sing. Just usually. Sing your tap off. Any new songs or anything like that? <clears throat> no, so if you don't play people new songs, you play them what they want to hear, you know, the ones they bought. Yeah. John, you've written quite a few songs. Nick Kendall, Radio Hong Kong. Will you be writing a song with a Chinese flavor, do you think? No, Nick. No, never... no Nick. No. <coughs> Definitely not, Nick. Trish Hello. Can also... What do you think of well? Uh, oh, hey? very nice, yes. <laughs> Met Saturday once. nights, much better. Oh. <laughs> 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 well? Yes, very nice too. Charming. Oh, I see. Um, I see. It should be for the radio questions. We seem to be infiltrating. Uh, <laughs> can I ask? Uh, <laughs> can I ask if there are any more press men with questions as opposed to radio men? <laughs> Correct. It's very good. It's, it's good for the business and it's good for the teenagers. Good it, no good. It's good. Good. Mr. Nickel, when I go back to London and, and things things seem to be jumping in London, so you know I've got a, a couple of television shows and a band's being formed and everything, so it looks as though things might nice. happen for me, you know. <laughs> George, yes. you and Mark Segovia, have you learned anything about the guitar playing from him? I have never met him, but and I haven't learned anything from him. I've learned a little bit, not very much, from his records. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think Mrs. Lennon thinks of the Beatles? Uh, she rather likes them. <laughs> no, because I never go with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I think I, can I ask now, can I, first of all, thank you very much for being so civilized and so good and so quiet, and can I ask all the, uh, all the people on the front row to move away so that the radio men can sit there? We are and the radio men. I know, but there may be radio men who weren't quite as close and advantageously placed <laughs> as you. Right, well, away from the radio men, thanks very much. I admire your audacity. I don't think so.
Tell me, John, have you ever been frightened by some of the crowds that are getting very, very close no, to you? No, 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 well, a bunch of the cameramen apparently put their cameras away and got bits of paper. Uh, John? You asked me yes. about getting in front. You get frightened um, by the crowds. I mean, sometimes they really converge on you, don't they? Yeah, but we're usually very well protected, you know. And the only thing, sometimes you get frightened, somebody's got to get bumped by the car, you know, because uh -huh. some people throw themselves at the car. I noticed one of the Dave Clark Five got hit by a stone somewhere. Yeah, it was very bad, you know. I feel sorry for him. And sometimes the young We've children... We've been hit by things on stage, but we try and ask them not to throw anything sweet or anything at all. Uh, Rather beans. send them, if they're going to send anything, throwing is, anything they throw is dangerous. Uh, what about uh, working with guitars that aren't amplified? Do you think that you rely a lot on the amplification? No, that's just a myth that the press have made up. Everybody who sings or plays any instrument relies on amplification to get it broadcast. Even a concert hall, they need microphones and things normally to pick it up. And we can play the same music on a number amplifier guitar, it's just the same. And you wouldn't be able to hear it. We record sometimes with an amplifier guitar, yes. a lot of our records. About how about uh, when you get some time to relax, how do you unwind and relax a bit? You do a bit of writing, is that right? I like to write just for myself, you know. And, uh, do you have a, a pet uh, food that you like? No, you know, I'm, I'm a, I go off food. I'm off it at the moment because we've been eating all the way over on this plane. But, it's a pretty hectic sort of life, almost like being in a goldfish bowl or something. I mean, do you yeah, find it? But, you know, we can always sneak out for a fly around the room. That's if we were budgies, man. Yes, you had a nice holiday a little while ago, too, didn't yeah. you? You slipped off the Caribbean, wasn't it? Tahiti. Uh huh. How was that? I understand the girls gave you a hard time because of your long hair as you were strolling down the streets yeah, of Papiti. Right. They right? all thought we were a bit funny, which is, I mean, don't blame them. They've never seen hair like it. You know, you, we used to suffer that when before we were known. People used to think we were a bit odd. Well, I, I must congratulate you for being very, very uh, natural and very, very nice. Uh, we, we often meet celebrities sometimes and we feel that they, they're doing everybody a favor, but you fellows are really down to earth. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Paul, you've uh, written all the songs, you and John together written most of the hit songs, haven't you? Yeah. How do, you do you have any formula or any system that you uh, use when you're writing these songs? No, uh, no th you know, it's ha they happen lots of different ways. Sometimes maybe he'll write a whole song himself, mm -hmm. and I, or I will, you know. But we always say that we both wrote it. Uh, yeah. We've both written it. Yeah. I just wonder what came first, maybe the lyric or the tune. Well, that's another thing. You know, sometimes the lyric does come first. Sometimes the tune. Sometimes both together. Sometimes he'll do one line. Sometimes I'll do one line. It's very, yeah. very. Uh, I noticed that very, uh, some other singers are singing your material too. Uh, do you feel that you shouldn't record it all? You write it for somebody else. No, the thing, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I think it's silly if we record everything because we're just pushing it down people's throats then. I think if we can get different sounds with our songs then people like them better. It went, uh, a recent example with Peter and Gordon in England who recorded Well Without Love and it's gone right to the top of America, England, everywhere. Yeah. What about your money? Are you investing it in, uh, in any sort of I don't trust know. fund? Yeah, I, I don't know about it really because our accountant uh, deals with it. You know, so we don't know an awful lot about that it. That tax must take a pretty good uh, sure chunk out of it. Yes. Well, thanks ever so much. George? Oh, sorry, all right. George is busy talking to another reporter. I think I have a word with uh, Jimmy Nickham. Jimmy, have you got a moment? Um, one thing I would like to ask, what, what is the, the group's own favourite group? Apart from yourselves, I mean, uh, what kind of music do you, do you go for when you're, when you're not playing yourselves? Or, or what is yours, all right? You can't speak the name. Well, they like, all t uh, um, they like all types of things, you know. Yeah. They, uh, they like a lot of um, American American groups as well as a lot of English English ones, you know. They're... When you say American groups, do you mean... Uh, well, no, not... Uh, um, not <laughs> Not groups, I mean, you know, artists, yeah, and artists, people like Chuck Berry and those types of people. What about uh, yeah. Well, I can't, um, I can't speak for them about that, but um, I, uh, I particularly uh, don't like it. You know, I like uh, um, things that move on all the time. Um, well, yes, I like Brubeck, but I think there's, uh, um, you know, my own particular favourite is Cannonball Adderley. And Ellington and Basie, of course, you know. 
Yeah, well, you see, the, diff the difference between uh, um, the difference with me is that I've played in big bands and I've played, big, um, you know, arrangements by all these people, and I have loads of tapes at home of Adderley and Latin, good Latin American music, you know. Well, I, I just had lunch and they got. Um, I'm fairly well known, you know, as a session drummer in England. I do quite a lot of sessions for big artists, you know. And well, it was just a telephone call, and it was very mysterious. First of all, you know, they nobody wanted to commit themselves, so uh, I had to go along to EMI, and I met them for the first time and just rehearsed about five numbers, and then was told that was it. Yeah, well, um, I've made one record, you know, in London, which didn't go. I tried uh, two months ago. I tried to uh, make my own band happen, you know, like everybody does, you know, a chance get a recording contract. But um, now um, I had the band, but I didn't have any work. But now it looks as though I've got the work, but I've got the band. Yeah. So when you go back, you go have to get a group together. Well, that's been um, that's being arranged. You know, people have people have taken it on. Them. Um, you know, my manager is sorting it out, but obviously, I want to I want to supervise it naturally. You know. Well, good luck to you anyway. Thank you. I'm glad you got such a good start. That was uh, Jimmy Nickel, and um, I think I see Paul McCartney now. Um, Having a word, uh, George Harrison's talking. Let's see if we can pick up what he's saying. Anyway, bought all the tickets, so they can't be disappointed. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, what was that question about? He said something about did did I know the teenagers in America were disappointed because we weren't going there in July, which is a lot of rubbish anyway because it was never intended for us to go there in July. George, did, you were with the Beatles from the start, were you? Yes. And the Beatles are responsible for this, uh, what's called the Mersey Beat? Yeah, well, um, the time that we started to make records, although the, the, the current trend in Britain was Cliff Richard and the Shadows, it was sort of ballads and things, but we, we'd been playing for years, ever since the first rock and roll started. Well, we, well, we didn't like the ballad stuff, so we just carried on playing it, and eventually we we wrote our own songs and when we managed to record then they caught on and it sort of brought it back and then it the, the uh, all the groups changed over again how, how do you feel about all these other groups uh, following your style now it's great I mean they say it's the biggest form of flattery isn't it uh, George, you've um, certainly made a fantastic success. The Beatles have been a terrific success. But do you yourselves really think that you've got talent? Yeah. I don't. The thing is, the sound is no different, is it? It's just like any other rock and roll group. Well, it, it, uh, the sound's no different now. But when we first uh, started recording, it was because no other groups were recording in that that style. But now everybody's recording like us, so it's not different. But the thing is. None of us possess to be individually to be great musicians or very talented. It's mainly just luck. But, no, but the thing is, as a group, I think we're we're good. I think we're much better as a group as than we are individually, and that's one reason why we'd never go solo. How much was it? How much was the is it the suit and the clothes and the haircut as compared to the actual music, though? Uh, it was the gimmick of the the haircut more than anything else, don't you think? Well, the thing is, the people heard our records before they saw us. So, I mean, maybe the records, uh, maybe the hairstyles and our clothing, uh, just us, you're helped. Not on, you're not on top of the hit parade anymore now. How long do you think not it'll be England. before you're finished, do you think? Oh, I don't know. We don't care, you know. We just go for as long as we last. And when, when we do fade out, we'll have, a, you know, we'll have things to do. We won't worry. What, so, what, what, what do you see yourselves doing I mean, when you fade out? I mean, maybe it takes a year, two years, five years. What do you see yourselves doing after this? Um, you can't go on till well, old men with this kind of haircut, for example, no, really, can there's, you? There's, we've thought about it. We'll have uh, music, They're songwriting, mainly Paul and John, music publishing, record um, production, 
you know, all sorts of things. And becoming, small business. Becoming businessmen. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but, you know, we'll be all right. How much money have you actually made? Do you know? I don't know. Our accountant's still trying to work that out. And trying to save what, what, some you, from the tax. Do you, um, do you draw a sort of a living uh, wage no, from all these earnings, or how do you, how do you no, actually we, work? We just get enough money to last us for the week. How much is that? Oh, enough for cigarettes and things. Because we have all our hotel bills and everything know. sent to an, onto an account, you know, onto the company. We have figures of millions and millions of pounds that you're being made. No, yeah, I mean, well, what do you live it's on? Not, it's often being quoted that we're all millionaires, but I think that's untrue. In fact, I know it's untrue. But not if you compare it to the, the numbers of records you've sold. You've, they've sold millions of records. You must get, uh, I mean, just on a straight uh, uh, calculation, you work yeah, it out. It's all right working out how much money we've, the, we've made out of records and shows, but that's all before the tax have had their, their part. And the tax... What with, about your American with, earnings, though? Uh, that's, is that well, American that's tax? Of course. Or, there's, and English tax? No, there's just the English tax, I think. But it's still, you know, they try and take 18 and 3 out of every pound, which is a lot. Isn't it? Are you happy? Yes, very. Why are you happy? Because I enjoy doing what we're doing. This sort of publicity and the hard life and everything, you're still happy. It's okay. I'm feeling a bit tired today because we've been flying for two days or something, but normally, you know... I'm feeling much better. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this should conclude the press conference now. I think everybody's had a very good crack of the whip. So if you would just say goodbye and go, it would be most grateful. We thank you very much and say goodbye from the Beatles. I just want to ask you one last thing. When you have free time, what do you do with it? Uh, well, it depends where we are. If we're in England, we go out at night to theatres, nightclubs, or go driving, or see movies. Thank you. Well, thank you all, all, of, all for it. I will have to send good nature jostling by the uh, by the boys themselves. The, uh, let me describe the scene here to you. Uh, we're standing just behind the um, the four Beatles themselves. Um, Jimmy Nickel, the new Beatle, is on the right, and he looks exactly the same. As for the rest of them, well, uh, they look just like the pictures. Uh, very uh, very good-looking boys, and uh, boys are obviously having a very good time and reveling in it as they. Um, as uh, they're so sitting here facing a battery of um, news cameras. I should tell you, I've been at press conferences for almost every, uh, <laughs> every um, celebrity and uh, movie star, recording star here in Hong Kong. I've never seen a crowd such as this. And now they're, uh, they're making up a little group to uh, make a better picture. They're all getting together. And they're uh, absolutely blinded here by uh, popping flash bulbs. Absolutely blinded by them and the big arc lights coming on for a television show. They're all in a very tight little group here, looking very, uh, <laughs> very much as if... Hi, movie stars have arrived here, and uh, this has brought the Beatles to their feet. Yes, it is. They've been here for a fashion show at the hotel. They're being introduced by Frankie Blaine, and uh, the Beatles are even uh, combing their hair, I think, because of this. <laughs> It's a lie. He's lying to you, listeners. Correct. That was the voice of John Lennon. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think there's any suspicion of hair combing going on amongst these boys uh, at the moment. Two uh, beautiful young ladies just arrived. Beautiful uh, Thai film stars, according to Nick, who knows most of the beautiful girls around town, have been introduced and are now in the place of honour in front of the um, in front of the Beatles themselves. And they're causing quite a stir. Nick Kendall's getting his face in there. Come to think of it, I've never seen the face of a movie star at a press conference without seeing Nick Kendall's face in there somewhere. They're all together, and the Beatles are making a great fuss of these guys. Really enjoy all the noises from the, um, the photographers, the press photographers themselves. They're shouting, kiss her, kiss her. But uh, nobody's, uh, 
<laughs> nobody's accepted the invitation, and even uh, this beautiful Thai girl has, um, they're enjoying themselves, and uh, the photographers are having an absolute field day. I've never quite seen anything like it. They're popping away, shouting, asking for new poses, and the four boys are with their heads in a sort of diamond shape. John Lennon is on the left, on the top, Paul McCartney, and on the right, Jimmy McNichol. And uh, the fourth Beatle is sitting down at the table with the four of them grouped very tightly around them. Are they both uh, considering they've flown all the way out from, uh, from London, considering our seats as uh, John Lennon there, all the way out from London, looking very fresh and not tired a bit. Um, and also looking as if they still get a great kick out of this sort of um, um, adoration, I think is the best way to describe it. Well, the, um, the manager of the president promised me a little earlier that it was going to be a well-ordered press conference, and so far it is. Nick Kendall. I'd like to mention that uh, Jimmy Nichol, who's just joined the group, is uh, working very well on that Beatle haircut. He's almost up to the other Beatles, as a matter of fact. If you notice that, uh, it's uh, not quite to the eyebrows, but uh, it's coming along great, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's all over the... Um, yeah, it's about the same length at the... Yes, well, here we are at the uh, Nine Dragons, and the boys have just arrived. They're uh, shaking hands with Bob Sowers of the President Hotel, and um, uh, Bob has just issued them to their place. Um, we're explaining how the microphones work, and my goodness, the, uh, the boys themselves are having a field day. I'm standing just behind them. Those um, haircuts are really marvelous. A late beetle here. That was John Lennon laughing. And the absence of Ringo Starr, whose perspective will be in the show on Thursday, Jimmy Nichols. Thank you, Jimmy. Go on, Jay! Yes, and uh, Jimmy, too, is sporting um, a beetle cut also. This will be followed by uh, talking interviews and writing interviews for about 20 minutes. Talking, yes. This will be followed by radio. Right. What? We will be obliged if the photographers... I wasn't told. I would be obliged if the photographers... Back, it's enough to give the Sergeant Major of the, um, the Guards Division a heart attack, I should imagine. What do you think of all this, Patricia? It's quite extraordinary because uh, they, they remind me of medieval actors walk straight out of a Henry the F a Shakespearean play, you know, rather crude sort of soldiers. And uh, it's so odd to hear these very rough voices coming out of these long haircuts. <laughs> yes, well, it is indeed. And uh, I think uh, Pat is taking a very uh, mature view of the whole proceedings, as indeed she was at the airport. Certainly, we've never seen a crowd at the airport quite the size as that crowd that uh, got out there to greet them uh, today. And uh, now on come the arc lights, the big clear lights as the uh, movie cameras begin to whirl. And we're standing facing them, just behind the Beatles themselves, and um, almost blinded by it all. I suppose the lads themselves are, um, are quite used to this sort of thing. And um, certainly photographers are having a field day. I'd like to ask John Lennon if he likes the Beatles himself. I blind, <laughs> Imagine he uh, hears his records quite often. I don't think I should ask him now, though, because uh, the time has been allocated to the photographers, and they must be at least six or seven deep. Oh, a movie star or something has arrived. I think it's the Thai.